How to get freelance clients with zero experience. That is the number one question that I get asked. So the first thing you need to do Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Brandy Morgan and we talk about all things freelancing, working remote, personal branding, business, and of course, creating the life that you want. If you want to be part of this freelance family, make sure to hit that subscribe button now. And of course, be sure to like this video or dislike it so I know how you're feeling about it. I would greatly appreciate it. So the number one question that I get asked, especially when I do a Q&A on my Instagram, I'll throw my Instagram up here if you want to come follow. I do talks, I answer questions on there, and you definitely get a more one-on-one -on -one with me on Instagram. But the number one question I get asked on there is, how do I get clients if I have no experience? The answer is you can't. You can, you can get clients without experience because everybody starts from somewhere. I got my first client when I was in college where I did not have experience, especially in web development because that's what I was going to college for. But I was able to leverage the techniques that I'm gonna give you in this video to land my first client during college and obviously multiple since then. In order to be a successful freelancer, you need to have a skill that a business is willing to pay you for. That skill can be web development, web design, graphic design, video editing, digital marketing, YouTube channel management and SEO. You can be super specific about the platform. Maybe you only do Instagram or you only do Facebook. Maybe you only do paid ads. There are so many things out there that businesses are willing to pay contractors and freelancers for. You just need to have one of those services and you need to let people know about it. So how do you offer those services if you don't have any actual real world experience? And when I say real world experience, I mean swapping the service for money. This doesn't mean that you worked professionally at a normal nine to five job where you are offering these services because a lot of the services I offer, I never worked a normal nine to five job doing those services. It has been something that I have built up in my freelance career and now as a digital agency owner. So the tips that I'm gonna give you, they are gonna cover all the ranges of freelancing from being a web developer, software developer, to copywriting, digital marketing, social media management, and everything in between. These tips are crucial if you wanna start landing clients with zero experience. And if you wanna skip ahead or browse the different chapters, there will be chapters for this video and they are in the description below. So the first thing you need to do is have a portfolio. If you have no experience and no professional experience doing what you do, you need to make yourself present online to showcase the services that you offer. But you're gonna say, Brandy, why would I build a portfolio if I have no work to show? That is a great question. The work that you are gonna show, if you truly have no experience, they could be dummy projects or mock projects that you've created for potential clients or even better, the clients and the type of clients that you are seeking. Here's an example. If you are in the web development software space, it is most likely that you use certain technologies or you prefer to use certain technologies to build with. You would want to have your portfolio with projects filled with those technologies. Let's say you're in the social media digital marketing space. You would wanna create mock campaigns or mock social media graphics, mock hashtag strategies, mock TikTok campaigns, YouTube strategies for potential clients that you're seeking out. The best way to do this, if you already know the type of client or the type of industry and business that you're going after, you should create content for that industry and for those types of client because it shows them exactly what it is that you can do for them. The next thing that you wanna do in your portfolio, so this would be number two. Not only do you wanna have images or graphics of the type of work that you've created for your previous clients or your potential clients, you wanna have video walkthroughs 
where you're talking about the technologies you use to build them or the technologies you use for your digital marketing campaign or your data analytics deep dive. You wanna talk about the technologies you used, why you used them, and the problem that you're solving. What that does is it creates a personal touch because when people just go to a website, they have no idea what they're looking at because they don't know you. So having video walkthroughs, even just one or two about different projects that you've done or the services that you offer, it really adds that personal touch for them to get to know you as a person. And also, it gives them that personal feel that you're taking your time to show them the type of work that you're capable of doing. Having mock data, mock campaigns, mock websites on your portfolio is going to give your website the authority that it needs when people are looking at you to work with you. This goes for even your Fiverr or any of the other freelance websites you use, which I don't necessarily ever recommend using Fiverr. If you're curious about the freelance websites, I do recommend. I will link that video in the description. I have a list of my top 10 freelance websites that you can check out. But if you're gonna use a website like that, Oftentimes, after you get through the initial first hoop of them being interested in working with you, you're going to move to having a conversation where they want to see previous work that you've done. That's where your portfolio comes in hand and that's why it's so important to have a portfolio. People want to know that you're able to solve the problem that you have. And if you already know the industry that you're potentially wanting to get into, having those mock companies on your portfolio where they're actual examples of people and companies in those industries and you're solving the problem for them, that gives them the assurance that they need to want to work with you. So having your portfolio, having the mock websites or the mock social campaigns or digital marketing or copywriting, whatever it is, having those on your website and the robust information, that's really a huge game changer, especially in 2021, where we are moving into a freelance world in this sort of gig economy that we're in. Do this so you stand out from the rest. Don't do what everybody else is doing and just throw up generic portfolios. Add that special personal touch so people can get to know you and so potentially you could actually have a longer lasting contract with that client. The next thing that you can do is exactly what I'm doing here is Talk about your services on social media. Become that person that knows everything about website SEO or everything about Facebook ads. Be that person that people think about when they're like, oh, you know, I need to run an ad campaign. What can I do? They know that if they search through your content that they're gonna get the answer. And then maybe they're like, well, this is too hard. Why don't I see if I can hire this person to do it? Content is king in our world and make your content stand out. And this doesn't mean to feel defeated when you see other people with bigger followings that are doing what you're doing, especially in the social media digital marketing space. I feel like that's everywhere. I see that all the time. I'm in that space on the digital marketing side, so I get it. But be different than the rest. Add that personal touch when you are creating your content. Create a Facebook page or a Facebook group and invite people into it where it's super industry specific and you give out free advice. The reason why is there are two types of people. There are people that are gonna take your advice and do it themselves and you're probably we're never gonna work with them anyways. But then there's also those people that are like, yeah, I don't wanna do it. I need to hire for that. If they're already in the Facebook group that you've started, why not provide those services as well. Yes, it may sound like it's extra work, but it always is. Like, there's no silver bullet for building a six-figure freelance business or greater. You need to put in the work, you need to put in the time, you need to be strategic about what it is that you're doing. So, number one, have a portfolio. Have it be awesome. Number two on that portfolio, especially if you have no experience, create mock clients where you're actually showcasing the skills that you offer to future potential clients. Do those video walkthroughs where you're talking about the solutions and the technologies used to provide the best, best result for your clients. And then lastly, be on social media, talk about what it is that you're creating. And of course, the bonus, start a Facebook group or a Facebook page. 
You may be like, Brandy, Facebook's outdated. Yes, but there's so many business owners that use Facebook still, and it doesn't hurt to be that one page where people can come to where you're giving people free advice. It's a great way for stuff to spread quickly because it's so shareable on the Facebook platform. Those are my tips on how to start getting freelance clients in 2021 when you have zero experience. I hope you liked this video. Once again, if you did, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Or if you have another topic, I do actually have a Discord and a Slack group where I do take video suggestions. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.